against civilians by a conscious pilot. Certainly that was politically, if not religiously, motivated. Now, of course, there are major differences between what happened centuries ago and what happened 15 years ago, but there are similarities as well. We continue in our world. We see acts of terrible violence. We see terrible accidents happening. I think there is something that we can take from this text on days like today. We know that Israel, during the time of Jesus, had been conquered by Rome. Rome was a constant presence and a reminder to the Jews that they were under siege. They had learned to live with the situation, but there was a constant tension. And an underground religious movement was actually formed to begin to fight for freedom. Pilate, who was Rome's representative, was despised. And we know from history that Pilate was ruthless. And so this group of people come to Jesus to talk about the incident at the temple. Apparently, Pilate was angered by something that had happened in Galilee, and he decided that he was going to make an example of some of the Galilean Jews who were visiting Jerusalem. And he ordered his soldiers to go into the temple in the middle of the day when thousands of people would be worshiping and execute them. And it was done to send the Jews a message. If you don't keep your region under control, you will suffer the consequences of Rome's might. It was a strong reminder of what all the Jews had suffered under Rome. And we can certainly understand Israel's anger and their loss. Pilate had struck them at their most sacred place in the temple. It was the center of their life. It was a symbol of their identity not unlike the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. I have left a persuasive message. Every time the Jews entered the temple, they were reminded about what had happened there. Every time they went into the temple to worship, they would remind, be reminded that even on the sacred soil of the temple, they were not necessarily safe. And isn't that true for us? We've been changed by September 11th. We now go to places like airports and schools and malls and movie theaters not sure if we might or might not be safe. And we mourn the loss. We mourn the loss of our feeling of security and being safe in this country. And so as Jesus is talking to his disciples, they're asking those questions that we too would ask. Why did this happen? Why did this happen to these people? And what Jesus tells them is that really they are no better than anybody else, and they're no worse than anybody else. They didn't deserve what happened to them. Just as those who died on September 11th, regardless of where it is that they perished, did not deserve them for this to happen to them. It's not like God was out to get one of the things that I really dislike is when people, someone passes away or maybe a plane crashes or whatever and somebody says, well, I guess it was just their day. As if somehow God pulled that plane out of the sky. That's not true, folks. Terrible things happen in this world. We live in a broken, fallen world. Terrible things happen. People do terrible things. God is not to blame. These people weren't to blame. It just didn't turn out to be their day that particular Tuesday morning. They all got up that morning, got ready for work or school or wherever they intended to go, just like they did every other morning. And never in a million years did they or their family members or their friends or their co-workers ever think that that was going to be their last day on Earth. There's been many tragedies caused by September 11th. Not only the loss of our freedom, as I mentioned, but we have lost servicemen and women. In wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, a thousand more were injured and carried emotional scars and the trauma of that. The term terrorist is not common in our vocabulary. We could probably call pilot terrorist this day. But you know what? In 15 years, we've carried on. 
We've lived our lives. We've known tragedy and we've known joy. It's not an easy thing to do. But I do believe that our faith requires it of us. That we cannot allow death, not even death on a large scale, blind us to the resurrection. And that is a message to everyone who goes through a tragedy. figure all of this out? How do we begin to make sense of not only what happened on September 11th, but what has happened in so many other tragedies since and will continue to happen, unfortunately, in the future? In the midst of all the confusion, I think the answer is actually very simple. But Jesus is saying here in the scripture that life is uncertain. That you or me or any, any one of us here at any time to die at the hands of some madman or in some accident. And the key is that we need to be ready. We hear every once in a while of someone who just walks over dead. No sign of sickness or illness, they just fall over dead. To me, those are people who are truly blessed. People who don't suffer. However, it's very um, shocking to people and it shouldn't be something that we fear. If we know that person or if we are sure that we ourselves are right in front of them. It's a horrible tragedy those people passed away in New York and Washington and Shanksville that day. And how good it is to know that many of them are on to their heavenly reward. We need to know, we need to be sure that we are in a right relationship with God all the time. And that kind of ran through, especially for me, this past Friday evening. Many of you met Ethan, my nephew, he was here on uh, Sunday for worship. On Friday evening, a um, band, a church band from a church in Washington, Pennsylvania, was traveling to West Virginia to do some mission work um, to the flooding victims there. A car came across the median, hit them head on, and three of them were killed. Two of them were teenagers who are classmates of Ethan. How do we begin to understand that? How do we begin to explain that to our children? We really can't explain it. We just have to know that we are in a right place with God. And the truly only good news of a terrible situation like that would be that that person is in heaven. As hard as it is for family and friends, that's the good news. None of us wants to die in an accident. None of us wants to die on the hand of violence. But the truth is we shouldn't be afraid. There is no fear if we know we're ready. How can we be afraid if we know we're going to heaven? On September 11th, as I said, those folks had no idea this was their last day. <coughs> I can guess that some were ready, and some were not. And some of them became ready in the last moments of their life here on earth. And they discovered and called out for God's help. And as far as answering the question, where was God on September 11th? God was right there. God was in the World Trade Center. God was on those airplanes. God was at the Pentagon. God was there. We live in a fallen world. But God never leaves us. <coughs> so as we remember September 11th today, take two things away from you. Away from you. God never leaves you as the first one. And the second one is to be ready. Make sure that you are in a right relationship with God. A couple of days ago, Alan Brooks, our district superintendent, uh, emailed to the pastors a, um, 
a commentary, I guess you would call it, on Psalm 34. And I thought it was very touching, and he uh, told us we could do whatever we wanted with it, and I told him that I was grateful because I was going to share it with all of you. So these are his thoughts, um, intermixed with the words of Psalm 34. I will share the goodness of the Lord at all times. The praise of our God will always be on my lips. In times of terror and memory, memory of dust and sky, of fire and fear, memories of a day filled with tragedy and heroes. We remember that fateful day, September 11, known to us as 9-11, a day of horror, of rescue, and of bravery. A day when many ran from burning buildings, many ran from horror, many ran for their lives. A day when others ran into burning buildings to save lives. I will glory in the Lord, let the afflicted hear and rejoice, glorify the Lord with me. Let us praise God's name together. In our memory of that day, let us not continue to live in fear and terror, but to trust in the Lord. In this memory, may we taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in the Lord. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. That the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Bless all first responders and emergency personnel. Watch over those who rush in, when all others flee. Come, O oh Lord, and rescue the rescuers. I will share the goodness of the Lord at all times. The praise of our God will always be on my lips. In times of terror and memory, memory of dust and sky, of fire and fear. We remember that fateful day, 9-11, at the moment of silence. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is on page 377. Let us stand together and sing. 